Howdy folks, John here. RC Heli review day today. We are looking at a brand new helicopter from a new company actually in the RC helicopter game, Goose Guy. And if you can get past the name, this thing is bloody impressive. I haven't been this uh, impressed with a small 200 size helicopter since the introduction of the first uh, OMP M2 back in 2019. And as I had mentioned back then, I predicted more high-end heli manufacturers would start going with the direct drive brushless main motors. More expensive way to do it, but I predict more high-end small helicopters will be using this technology because it works so, so well. And that has certainly happened. Everyone has jumped on this technology pretty much. I want to thank Banggood right now for sending this so we can have a look at it together. I will have product links below in the description so you can check out the current pricing. And I should mention, if you order it with extra packs at time of purchase, you'll save quite a bit of money. Ordering the three LiPo version over the one is only $20 more. To get two more batteries for 20 bucks, it's kind of a no-brainer. Impressive presentation. Comes in this nice foam case for both storage and transport very much like OMP M2s. And anyone who looks at this, yeah, got lots of OMP DNA in it. Uh, there's speculation if it was people who worked at OMP who then went to uh, form Goose Guy, I really have no idea. So if you like OMP products, I think you're gonna like this too. This is a little bit bigger than the original OMP M2, but it's pretty much on the same playing field and very similar to the new OMP Evo. The build quality is so impressive. It doesn't come with any manual as you can see, but uh, all the manuals are available on Goose Guy's website. I will have links below. I've got the blue and green version. They come in three bright color formats, which is nice. So in the case, we get the helicopter itself. We'll look at the helicopter up close in just a bit. This is the two battery version. So we've got two 3S LiPos. They are 750 milliamp hour, XT30 plug, of course a standard three cell balance port on there. No charger or anything, so you have to have your own charger. This is the bind and fly version. No radio comes with it. They have one with a basic little radio, but I think most people who are gonna be getting this, uh, you're already you know, fairly intermediate advanced helicopter pilots so you've probably got a good computerized radio and lots of connectivity options out of the box comes with a built-in sfh ss receiver and you've also got s bus input on it or uh, dsm for spectrum users so no lack of connectivity options we get a set of spare main blades we get two spare tail blades and we get some zip ties, an extra main shaft, which is nice, a head axle, some screws, some washers, three servo arms. One thing it doesn't come with is no spare ball links. So just quickly go over some of the uh, features on this thing. Let's take the little blade holder off. The blades are super stiff. So yeah, this thing is certainly capable of some crazy hard 3D flight, but uh, it also performs very gently when set up to do so. So it pretty much covers the full realm from beginner right up to a hardcore pro. Full metal head, it's actually using washouts, so it's not a DFC head, so some people will like that. Parts count is up, and yes, this is a parts high little heli and we'll see that when we take all the canopy off they certainly haven't skimped on on anything on it uh, everything is really high-end quality there of course is our big brushless outrunner motor super efficient super quiet it's using a large diameter tail rotor that's running at a slightly lower rpm than on the original omp m2s of course the new evo same idea bigger tail, so it's not making as much buzzing noise. That's one complaint you hear often on all these uh, direct drive helis is how loud the tail rotors are. Really, the tail rotors aren't any louder. You're just hearing them a lot more 
because the brushless motors are running so quiet. There's no gear whine masking the tail rotor noise. The heli itself looks gorgeous and probably the neatest feature on it is the battery change or battery access. Instead of pulling the whole canopy off, uh, you know, with little sharp pegs and grommets that tear over time, this we've got a little metal catch and the whole front mouth section, I suppose, doing the old Pac-Man here. Howdy, partner! Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, couldn't resist. Makes battery changing really easy. Plug our pack in. Get the wiring up there, close up the mouth. That is awesome. Someone was thinking when they uh, designed that. Full carbon frame, it's actually a stacked frame. And nylon landing struts, very impact resistant. Aluminum tail boom, it's actually rectangular. I suppose if you want to be correct about it, it's octagon shape, it's beveled on the four corners. But it's essentially a, a rectangular uh, aluminum tail boom. Carbon tail fin. And then the little direct drive brushless tail motor screwed onto the carbon plate here with three screws. Single screw with a shaft with flats on either end so uh, it, the tail rotor won't back off. It's, you know, it's held on to those flats. The motor wiring there, as you can see, quite well protected. So let's check the actual blade length. If you want to size your helis by uh, bolt hole to blade tip, which is the standard, 195 millimeters. So yep, very close to a 200 size heli. That's what we'll call it. Again, it's called the S2. I'm kind of thinking that Goose Guy will come out with an S1 to compete with the OMP M1 most likely. You know, a 120 size, 130 size machine. Okay, my first little complaint, this is minor, but uh, I would much prefer if they used the exact same type of screw head on all the fasteners. This heli is a combination of both 1.5 hex heads and Phillips heads. So it would be nice if it was all 1.5 hex, but uh, that's just a minor little complaint. So to get this off, we fold the blades back and this should just kind of maneuver over the blades like so. So that's how you would take the top half off. So with the canopy off, we can have a proper look now at uh, the overall design of this thing. Mechanically set up really well when all the servo arms are at right angles to the servo or level. Swash is perfectly level front to back, side to side. Washout arms are perfectly level as well. But you can see that it is quite parts intensive for such a small heli. You know, you've got little reinforcement plates here, gives some eye candy, but it's a neat little uh, feature. They're on both sides. Again, stacked frames. So parts count is up a bit. Servos are plastic on the bottom half, but the top half that mounts to the uh, helicopter is aluminum. They look really good. Of course, uh, coreless digital uh, metal geared servos. The servo mounting, as is typical on this type of helicopter, uses a single structure aluminum case that the servos are screwed to, which has also got the upper and lower bearing for the main shaft. And then of course, the uh, outrunner motor below. There's the uh, opening lower canopy section. This is just screwed on with two uh, little hex screws and then there's nylock nuts on there. So you can adjust the tension on this if you wanted it uh, looser or tighter. It's got a metal sprung catch. Let's revisit the battery for a bit. Talk about size, how it fits. So again, mouth opens and it's a friction fit, just slides between the frames. There's a little plate on the back that prevents it from sliding too far back and, you know, rubbing against the outrunner motor. But uh, the actual size, in case you're curious, these dimensions are going to be in millimeters I'm giving. This rascal is, let's call it, 60 millimeters long by 
24 millimeters wide by just over 24 millimeters high. So let's call it 24 millimeters square by 60 long. And that's the one thing I'm kind of disappointed with with uh, all of these small modern helicopters is battery size is very specific so it limits options greatly. But just for the heck of it, I got a little OMP battery. This is a 650 milliamp hour, so it's 100 milliamp hour less in capacity. But it does fit. You know, and you could go a little bit smaller. You don't want it so small though that it could pass that plate and hit the motor. But when you close up the mouth here, you know, the wiring and everything keeps the battery from sliding forward. As far as electronics go, I've got a combination system here, again, very typical. ESC board is on the bottom, fly barless system, flight controller board with the receivers on the top. We've got our three servo plugs on there. There's our DSM port for Spectrum, satellite receivers, SBUS receivers, and there's a little UART port as well. That's for a Bluetooth module that comes with uh, the heli. I didn't show that in the box. But you can plug that in and then just stick this onto the side if you want to program the fly barless system or adjust the flight parameters on it through an app. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather access it through the set button. And setting this, you can also do it without the app. You just hold the set button in for three seconds. You set this up identical to the OMP M2 fly barless system. So if you've ever flown, set one of those up. This is identical, but again on their website they've got all the information. Now I printed these out. Like I said, it doesn't come with any manuals, but I do have to talk about the manual a little bit because it's probably the most impressive manual I've seen for a small helicopter. It's just like a big helicopter manual. It's showing all the parts, showing how they fit together, all every separate screw, every separate bearing that is used in each step of assembly. The one thing I'm kind of <laughs> upset about is they don't offer this in kit form. This would be such a fun little helicopter to put together. I know most people they just want to get ready to fly stuff but for me the hobby half of the fun is building this stuff and uh, yeah I would certainly <laughs> uh, buy a kit version if they had it over the ready to fly one. But the manual is really well done. Shows what fasteners should be getting thread locked. Uh, what else was in here? They've got suggested, you know, throttle curves and pitch curves. Of course, set it up for your flying style. The translation isn't great. It's good though. Uh, I notice a lot of times they say, you press the bind button for three times. What they mean is three seconds. So, you know, just little things like that, just little translation hiccups, and then all the parts. I wanted to pull a few things apart. I've checked the bearings for grease. Everything was good there. Every fastener had thread lock on it. This is one of the most well put together small helicopters I have ever reviewed. They did a really nice job on here, right up there with OMPs, no complaints at all. Except when I was pulling one link off, it snapped right in half. And I just thought well, there's spare links, but no, there weren't. There were no spare links. Luckily, it's not going to be a showstopper. I'm just using a threaded metal link. As you can see, this is from one of my OMP M2s. They use the same size balls. At least we'll be able to fly it still, and we're not grounded waiting to order in some links. So that would be another recommendation. If you're going to get the uh, Goose Guy S2, order a bag or two of spare links. They're very inexpensive. To me, they should just include a bag considering they include blades, shafts. Um, yeah, give us some links, guys. So I'm just going to quickly go over how easy this is to bind up. So we'll power it up. Radio is turned off. So I don't have my radio turned on, but I do have a model already set in here. I just copied my standard OpenTX Heli template model. So once you plug the Heli in, you hold in the bind button. Hopefully that's showing up. And you'll see just right now the blue LED is flashing slowly. 
So when we hold the little bind button in for three seconds, okay, it beeps and now the blue LED is flashing fast. And again, we're using SFH SS protocol, which auto binds. So this should auto Switch warning. bind. Oop, what's turned Auto on here? There we go. Throttle release, low rates, rudder low, it's acro low. Supposed to be a ways away from the helicopter. See the red LED flashing fast. And there it's bound up. So blue LED will be solid. And red LED flashing slowly like that. That's just what stabilization mode it's in. Normal gyro mode. If I go into self-level mode. The red LED is on continuously. Go back to normal gyro mode. mode. Red LED flashes slowly. So that's how you can tell if you're in self level or normal gyro. That's just on channel five output. It's either on or off. No surprises with the setup. I've got my collective range set to plus minus 12 degrees. The manual shows 11.5 but plus minus 12 it's good enough I'm just using my 24 degree wedge I go over my wedge setting and my setup and tips ebook for anyone who's got that and nothing exciting here just going to show the output screen on my uh, radio master here so everything's set to a uh, hundred percent except for my collective channel uh, had to reduce it a little bit to get that collective range and to have it symmetrical. All the centering points at 1500 and uh, what channels had to be reversed here. Channel one and channel four, that was it. Is everything working correctly? It's time to go flying. Okay, flying the Goose Sky S2, or at least attempting to. So this is my Tamus mode running minus one to plus eight collective and 50% on all my dual rates. There's the yaw rate at 50%. Nice and gentle, cyclic is nice and gentle. Well trimmed out of the box. I'm in self-level mode now. No drifting. A Little bit to the right, but uh, we've got the wind pushing us there. Look at the uh, wind sock. Back into normal gyro mode see what the yaw rate is at high rudder rate. Wow, that's fast. See, it's consistent in both directions. Yes, so that's good. Oh, this color is horrible. Blue and green against a blue and green backdrop. Brilliant. Get the red and yellow one. Blue and green, horrible color choice. So just seeing how well it uh, tracks here. This head speed, by the way, I'm using the factory suggested setting of 60% power on my throttle curve. Tracks really nice though. So this is just a nice normal flight setup. Very fluid. I can't believe how quiet it is. Okay, we're going to idle up one here, so I'm running plus minus 10 degrees collective and 75% on my dual rates. Very nice. Nice sport setting this. Very fluid, no surprises. Predictable, feels good, but bloody hard to see. Can definitely do big sky flying with it, presuming you can uh, see it. Now, for my eyes, blue and green is a bad color choice, but uh, oh, it's fluid. Flies so well. Very nice little helicopter. Two. 
Definitely confidence inspiring. Yeah, I like this 75% dual rate on cyclic. And I've got all the uh, fly barless system settings just at their factory number five levels. So now we're going into the highest head speed, plus minus 12 collective range. And we're moving to 100% throw on cyclic. See what this is all about. Tracking very well at this higher head speed. Oh, she's fast. Let's see what 100% uh, on cyclic does here. Ooh, crisp. I'm sure some would like it even faster, but you can turn up the agility if you want. Again, this is at level five. No way to get this tail to blow out doing those pitch pumps. Too aggressive for me, but uh, certainly capable of some crazy stuff in the hands of a much better pilot. Nice and quiet. Geez, that five minutes went quick. Idle up one. Twenty. So other than choosing a horrible color, this thing is amazing. Middle rate. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Yeah, I know it is. Okay, we'll get it back on the ground. Normal mode. And I'm going to do some more flights, give you some flight times on batteries, and we'll see you back down in the shop. What a great morning out at the flying field with this thing. The more I flew it, the more comfortable I got with it. It's an amazing little helicopter. So happy with it. As far as flight times, I was getting a solid eight minutes, not taking the packs any lower than 80% uh, discharge state in my normal and tame flying mode. So lowest head speed, 60% on the uh, throttle curve there. In my sport flying mode, 70% on the throttle curve, getting a solid five minutes, again, not taking the pack lower than 80%. And in my highest head speed, according to the manual, you shouldn't set it any higher than 75%. And with that, um, got about three, three and a half minutes, really banging away on the collective, doing high power climb outs and descents, trying my hardest to heat everything up, and blow the tail out, just was solid as a rock. Both motors running cool, tame flying, barely above ambient for both, and really hard flying, uh, got up to about 95 Fahrenheit for both. It's about 70 Fahrenheit out today, so about 25 degrees over ambient. ESC never got above 100 Fahrenheit, so everything running cool. Easy to have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back flights. You don't have to let it cool down. And the opening Pac-Man mouth on this thing to change batteries, what a joy that was. It was incredible. So super awesome design feature, really liking that. Everything's still super tight. Nothing has loosened up or anything. It's a well-built, well-designed little helicopter. Little uh, complaints with it, of course. This color scheme for my flying environment, no good, but they give us three different color options. So choose wisely for your flying environment. Pick a color that is easy to see. I wish it came with a set of extra links. Of course, that was my fault. Uh, just Magilla gorilla the link and broke it. Not a problem with the helicopter, but these are the mechanical fragile fuses on it and uh, they will break with blade impacts and whatnot. So it'd be nice to have some spares. Otherwise, just order some up when you get the heli. The links are all the same, by the way, and I wish it would have had all uh, hex head fasteners instead of mixing hex head with uh, Phillips. That's a minor little complaint, though. Otherwise, for Goose Guy's first helicopter, amazing. You guys have done an impressive job. Again, links are below in the description if you're curious. Hopefully this uh, review helped you understand this heli a little bit better. Thanks for watching, and until next time, 
Enjoy your flying goo.